The principle of a cyclotron is to not just use electric field but also magnetic field. So the electric field's job is to increase the speed of the charged particle and the magnetic field's job is not to change the speed, it can't do that, but to confine the charged particle to a small space and make sure it comes back again and again into the electric field. And the way do we do that, so here's a setup, the way we do that is we build two D-shaped chambers and we call that as the D's, you know, because they're D-shaped. And if you want to look at the side view, I have a side view for you, this is what it looks like. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch on a magnetic field everywhere, okay? So we're going to switch on a magnetic field and let's assume that the magnetic field is in to the screen, into the monitor. If you look from the side view, it's going to look something like this. The magnetic field is going to look like this. And the space inside the D is completely vacuum. It's you remove the air out of it because you don't want your, your air particles to interact with your charged particles which is accelerating, right? You don't want to impede that. So this is complete vacuum. So let's imagine we put a charged particle, let's say a positively charged particle, somewhere in the gap over here. So here's our ch positively charged particle in the gap. Well, nothing's going to happen if it's at rest because the magnetic field is not going to put a force on a charged particle which is at rest. You need the charged particle to be moving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch on an electric field everywhere over here. The electric field will only exist in between the gaps of the 2Ds. And the same thing we will see from this side. Okay, so what's going to happen because of this? Our charged particle is now going to get accelerated as it goes from here to here. But wait a second. As the charged particle gets accelerated, it gets a velocity. And when it gets a velocity, the magnetic field is going to start pushing on it. Can you pause this video for a while and think about the direction of the magnetic force? We have worked this out before and if you if you're not unable to do that, I really want you to go back and check out the previous videos where I discussed them in great detail. So the magnetic force, if you have listened to this, if you've seen the tutorial carefully, magnetic force is going to be in the direction of V, that is towards the right, cross B, which is into the board, and that's going to be upwards. So that's going to actually make my charged particle go curved up this way, all right? It's gonna get curved up, and now it's over here, okay? Once it's over here, the charged particle is going to now describe a uniform circular motion from here all the way over here. That's what's going to happen to it, okay? And it's gonna go with a uniform speed, the speed it has acquired due to the acceleration. It's gonna have some speed V, and because of that, it's gonna go in a circle. It's supposed to be a circle, okay, this thing, doesn't look like a circle. Now, we have a problem. The problem that we have is, if we were to take that charged particle, and the charged particle circles like this, and if it were to enter into the electric field now, it would decelerate. And if it would decelerate, it would go all the way back, it would lose all that speed, and it would come to a stop. We don't want that, so what are we gonna do about it? Well, the answer is simple. We want it to accelerate again. So all we need to do now is switch the direction of the electric field. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> At least it's very easy to do it on my computer over here. And now that we have done that, you will see that our charged particle, when it moves over here, it's going to again accelerate. It, it's going in a curve, don't, don't forget that, because the magnetic field is going to put a force on that. The magnetic field is near to make sure it keeps curving. So it's going to go in a curve now. But notice that as it goes in the curve now, its velocity increases because when it goes from here to here. And as the velocity increases, at this point it has even higher velocity. And because it has even higher velocity, which you imagine a curve like this, and because it has an even higher velocity, now it's going to describe a bigger radius. I hope you remember the equation mv divided by qb. So as the velocity increases, the radius must also increase. So a charged particle has now come from here to here, but it has more speed. But wait, our electric field is again going to decelerate it. No, unless 
we switch the electric field again. Now that we switch the electric field again, the charged particle is going to experience an acceleration and this time the velocity will increase further and the magnetic force is because of the magnetic force is going to keep, it's still is going to still keep going in a curve but the radius is going to increase even further and now i hope you can understand what's going to happen the charged particle will keep on going in some sort of a spiral like this it keeps on going in a spiral that's an extremely bad spiral that i'm drawing over here but i hope you get the idea it's going to keep going it's going to keep going i think i'm going to draw better Try, I'm going to try and draw better over here. here. It's going to go in a spiral. Yeah, it looks much better from this side. And finally, once we see that it has a maximum radius, the radius of the D, what we're going to do is we're going to switch off the magnetic field and we're going to let it go. There will be some sort of a passage over here, which I have not shown, but there will be some sort of a passage and because of which the charged particle will eventually escape out from here. And now we will see that that charged particle is going to have a tremendous velocity. All right, so we're going to try and figure a couple of things out. The first thing we want to understand is this electric field, we have to be careful with it because that electric field has to keep switching. This electric field has to oscillate. If the electric field has to oscillate, we need to decide on the time period of the oscillation. How do we calculate the time period of the oscillation? Well, this is where we remember that the time period for the charged particle to complete one full revolution in an electro in, in, in a magnetic field we derived that last time that turned out to be 2 pi m divided by qb we saw last time that the time period is independent of the velocity and you know what that's going to be extremely useful because it doesn't matter how fast the charged particle is going its radius is always going to compensate and make sure that the time it takes to complete one full circle is always going to be this number and so let's, let's say that, that that time turns out to be, in, in our example, let's say 5 milliseconds. So what we need to do is we need to make sure for every half a revolution, that means for every 2.5 milliseconds, our electric field should keep switching. So let's say at time t equal to 0, our electric field is towards the right. We now have to make sure that at 2.5 seconds, the electric field should switch and become leftwards. And then again at 5 milliseconds the electric field should switch and move towards I mean come back to towards right so notice the time it takes for one full cycle of the electric field is just this the time period of the revolution of our charged particle is the time period of the oscillating electric field and it's for that reason this is also called as the cyclotron time period now but more importantly, I want to talk about what is the kinetic energy gained by the charged particle. That's the last thing I want to talk about. Well, we know the formula for the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy would be equal to half mv squared. And the kinetic energy gained would be the maximum velocity that is attained by our charged particle. Well, that maximum velocity can be calculated from the radius equation. Because we have seen before that the radius, I'm going to write that again, it's R Q B divided by M, the whole square. And that's gonna make the kinetic energy M square, which eventually gives me. Okay, there's nothing special about the kinetic energy. I mean, we can just derive that. Notice that it's telling you that if the radius of the D is bigger, you would expect more kinetic energy. That makes a lot of sense. Q is the charge, and if the charge increases, then the electric force on that would be more, so more kinetic energy. If mass was smaller, more the acceleration, more the kinetic energy. But here's a real shocker. The kinetic energy depends upon magnetic field. The big question mark over here is because we saw that the kinetic energy, the gain, is given by the electric field and not the magnetic field. Magnetic field doesn't even change the speed of the charged particle then why is it that the kinetic energy is depending on the magnetic field and more importantly where is the electric field in the equation it's the electric field that is supposed to uh, increase the speed of the charged particle i mean try to understand what's going on over here what i'm trying to tell you over here is that even though it's the electric field i mean that's the principle right i mean we discussed the principle even if it's the electric field which is increasing the speed of the charged particle we find that the final kinetic energy is independent of the e that means it doesn't matter what e is e could be 
what one volt per meter or a thousand volt per meter it doesn't matter it turns out on the other hand it turns out for some reason the kinetic energy of the charged particle depends on the magnetic field which is not even doing any work so to speak so can you try and figure out what is the solution to this apparent paradox think about it i really want you to think about this and if you get a solution please write down the comment below see you next time